here's Lisa Evans. Thank you, everybody. It's at this point in time where I feel overwhelmed. I have a big lump in my throat. Overwhelmed at the amount of love and support that I get in putting on these events. And at the start of every Stories from the Heart, I feel such joy and anticipation of the evening that is ahead of us. And tonight is no different. But tonight is very different because that's the exact theme. Tonight we are um, talking about a different. That is the theme that we have chosen. And we're certainly going to give Taylor Swift a run for her money. <laughs> for those people that have decided to be there rather than, than here. So before I get into telling you more about the show, I want to introduce you to a main character in our story tonight, and that is our wonderful Auslan interpreter, Paula Norman. And when I asked Paula how she would like to be introduced, she said, I'm normally just introduced as the interpreter. But I thought that she deserved a very special Stories from the Heart welcome. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Paula. So Paula Norman is one of seven children born to her deaf mum, Janice, who taught all the children to sign. Three of them went on to become professional interpreters. And Paula has been professionally interpreting for 23 years. Amazing. And of those 23 years, 18 of those years as a theatre interpreter. So we are really in good hands tonight and I'm so delighted that, that Paula said, I can tell already that she's going to be stealing the show, most definitely. <laughs> I'm so delighted that Paula said yes, that she would come along and she's going to be signing for the whole night. So it's going to be um, in incredible. At the last event, which was a couple of months ago now, I stood on stage towards the end of the show and I shared out loud my vision. And that vision was to have a Stories from the Heart event that would be inclusive for the deaf community, that would be Auslan interpreted live, and that would um, have the profits for all ticket sales to go to a Telethon Speech and Hearing, which is a charity that's very significant for me. And uh, right here, right now, that dream has has come true. And that wouldn't be possible without you all here tonight who have come along to help uh, support. So I'm very, very grateful to you for coming out tonight and for sitting in, in the audience and being here. It's going to be a fabulous, fabulous night. I'm very, very excited as I always am. And it feels really it feels quite intimate. So even though we have a larger venue, it feels more intimate. And maybe it's because it's only us in the building. We have the whole place to ourselves. And just a reminder that what is said at Stories from the Heart stays at Stories from the Heart, apart from the stuff that ends up on Facebook. <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff that ends up on Facebook. So if you have got your phone handy, please check in. Use the hashtag SFTH, hashtag Story Tribe, and tell everybody, particularly those Taylor fans, that you're here tonight celebrating stories with, with us. So the theme of different, we have a theme at Every Stories from the Heart, and tonight uh, we are um, sharing stories on the topic of, of different. And it's a topic that I've been mulling around with for, for a while. And I think that, you know, we talk a lot about our why and our purpose and really having that ability to embrace our differences and to celebrate our uniqueness. And I think that it's the ultimate form of self-love and acceptance when you're able able to do that. And if you're not able to do that, you're not able to be of service to others. And um, it's a topic that um, has been um, very much a, a, an issue for me at times, as well as for many people that I, that I talk with. So I, I grew up as a very, very shy child. And I behaved in an extrovert way because it was easier, because that meant I was able to fit in. So I spent a lot of my time trying to fit in and to, and to please others. I was the tallest girl in the ballet class. My teacher told me every lesson that I was far too tall to be a ballerina. So what did I do? I developed bad posture. 
so that I could shrink and hide because I wanted to be small like the delicate tiny girls. And then growing up, I was super skinny as a kid. I was tall and I was skinny and I had this stick-like figure and I had this big head on this little body with these long arms and legs. I was kind of like an uncoordinated baby giraffe. <laughs> And then when um, puberty came, well, puberty came to everybody else except me. It missed me out completely. And then I would hide in clothes that were too big for me. So I would wear these big jackets and clothes, even in the, the winter, because I wanted to hide my frame and I didn't want it to be apparent that I had no boobs. And all I wanted was boobs. I wanted the curves that the other girls had. And um, I was a skinny little thing. Anyway, we turned 18, me and my group of, of, of girlfriends, and we were best friends and we went everywhere together. And my girlfriends organized a, a holiday to Ibiza. That's where um, Essex girls go on holiday. They organized a holiday to Ibiza and I wasn't invited. They organized this holiday in secret and they kept it from me. And then about a week before they were due to go on their holiday, I found out. Now, I can't remember how I found out. This is the way before Facebook. I can't remember how I found out, but I found out that the four of them were going on holiday without me, and you can imagine how I felt at that age. I was absolutely devastated. I can still remember that feeling, thinking, you know, what, what, what have I done? What's gone wrong? Maybe it's been some mistake. Maybe they're about to tell me that, surprise, you're coming, but that wasn't the case. And I remember I was sobbing, and I was sobbing, and I was sobbing. And I ran to the end of the street to call my best friend, Tina. Now, just one step back from this story. Who can remember the days when not everybody had a phone at home? Can anyone remember that? And I, I'm from the UK, so on most street corners, there was a big red telephone box and you could make incoming calls into the telephone box. So my friend Tina and I, we had a designated time each day that we would ring one another. I lived in the nurses' quarters. Uh, we had this one uh, box at the end of the street. She lived with her parents. They didn't have a phone. So I would go to the end of the street and I would call Tina. So this particular day, I am sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. It's pouring with rain. I ran down the street and somebody's in my telephone box. So I'm banging on the door going, it's an emergency, it's an emergency, I need to call my friend quickly. This poor guy hung up and he walks out of the phone box thinking, is this woman crazy? And I rang uh, Tina. She picked up the phone and I'm sobbing and sobbing and it was just quiet. And I said to her, why, why, what, what have I done? Why aren't I coming on the holiday? And this is what she said to me. <coughs> we didn't want you to come on holiday because I want to be the thinnest girl on the beach. Aww. How weird is that? You know, what a warped mind that at that age we wanted the exact opposite to what we had. You know, all I wanted was the curves of my friends and all they wanted to be was slim like me. So thankfully, you know, I've learned a lot over the, over the, the years, uh, but I spent many years, you know, trying to, trying to blend in and trying to fit in and trying to, to, please, to please others. And I'm so glad that with my, my wisdom, I'm much more comfortable in, in my own skin. Now, when a virus destroyed a significant amount of my hearing, I was devastated because it meant that I was no longer able to work in my chosen profession as a midwife. I'd been a midwife for over 20 years, a job that um, is just wonderful, helping bring new life into the world. And at the time, it was really sort of the end of, of life as, as I knew it. I was left thinking, you know, what on earth am I going to do? But looking back over those 10 years, it's been an incredible adventure. And in losing my hearing and discovering my voice, I've also discovered so much more. I've discovered a resilience and a determination that I never knew that I, that I had. And in rediscovering a new purpose, I've now realized that I'm still able to bring joy into the world. I'm still able to deliver new life into the world, this time in the form of stories. And that's where I got the tagline of the story midwife. A client gave me the tagline of the story midwife. He introduced me, I went to, a, this isn't in the story by the way, I'm just making this bit up. Um, Paul will get used to this. So I, um, I was doing a, a speaking thing at, he, at an event for him and he put it on Facebook that the story fairy was coming. 
And I said, oh, Venkat, please. And I'm a bit old to be kind of a story fairy. It doesn't really fit. Um, can we maybe come up with a new name? And he said, uh, what about the story Queen? I thought, mm, I don't know about the whole Queen title. I'm not quite sure about that. And he said, well, what did you used to do before you started speaking and telling stories? I said, I was a midwife. He went, what's that? <laughs> I told him and he went white and then he said the story midwife you're the story midwife so ever since then the name has the name has stuck and, and my purpose in life these days is really to shine a light on others and to step up speak out use my voice and empower others to do the same because we all have stories worth sharing and tonight we're going to hear some incredible stories around the topic of different um, every every story is unique and and different some people have um, been served up a slice of difference by luck or bad luck whichever way you want to do it and other people deliberately carve out their difference so we're going to hear all sorts of stories some people have also been um, not fitting in at times, you know, not, not blending in. Other people are having to live with uh, different circumstances. So those are the types of stories that we're going to hear tonight. And um, or tonight, all profits from ticket sales will go to telethon speech and, and hearing. And yeah. And this is show number 11. So since we started in early 2016, over 150 people have stepped up onto a Stories from the Heart stage and shared a story. And we have raised almost $14,000 for a variety of different charities. And the idea of Stories from the Heart came about over a, a cup of coffee, as many good ideas do. And I was sitting having a cup of coffee with my um, bestie, Lizzie, who's been on this incredible journey with me all along. Another big lump forming in the throat, Lizzie. And uh, I'd been on this incredible speaking and storytelling journey and I said, Lizzie, this was at the end of 2015, if I hire a venue, twist a few arms and tell a story, do you think anybody will come along? She said, why not? And even if they don't, I'll be there anyway. <laughs> So March the 24th, 2016, I hired the upstairs room of the Vic Hotel. We squeezed 25 people into that room. I told a story and five other people told a story and we raised $600 for Kiva. It was an incredible night. And the six people that stepped up and shared a story on that night, you know, really I've got those people to thank for where I am today because without them saying yes and they didn't have a clue what was in store for them. They kind of said yes, and I feel very privileged that those six people entrusted me with their story. And a couple of them are here tonight who are going to be sharing a story with you as well. So since then, we've grown and grown and grown. This is um, the largest venue that we've, we've, had, we've had so far, and it's my absolute privilege to be your host tonight. So are we ready to get stuck into some stories? Yes. We are, okay. So our first story teller tonight is one of those people who said yes when I said would you like to come and tell a story and that is Sharon Atwood who's going to be making her way up to the stage now. Sharon Atwood also wrote the foreword for the um, Stories from the Heart Tales of Inspira Inspiration book and she has been an avid uh, story fan ever since. She missed one event, uh, Michael Bolton uh, sort of uh, <laughs> took, the, took the, uh, the, the best ticket last time, but very glad that she's back here tonight. And tonight she's going to be sharing a story with us called The Red Carpet. Please give it up for Sharon Atwood. Woo! 